okay, we'll go ahead and get rolling then. Um, this is our meeting, our WAG. So anyway, hi everybody. Um, just a reminder of our code of conduct. So keep it very polite and very respectful, very demure, very mindful. Okay. So <laughs> we're going to follow the rules. We're going to be respectful of one another. Um, that's what we're going to do. So um, any new faces want to introduce yourself to us today? Sure. Go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Hi, everyone. I'm Rebecca. And my sign name is like that. And um, the reason my sign name is like that is because um, I'm sort of a night owl. I like to be up when the moon is out. And so that's reminiscent of the moon's sign. Um, I'm not in the tech world. I'm just going to say that um, I'm not a coding person. That's not my thing. So I'm not involved in that end. So I have a lot of respect for it, but I don't do it. Um, for me, my work is um, engaged with accessibility and providing accessibility service, uh, services, interpreting, captioning for all different types of the community, uh, deaf community as well, but also the disability community in general, providing accessibility. Um, a lot of advocacy work is um, also part of what I do. And um, I met Catherine when I was visiting DC. And so we had a sit down and had a really good discussion about conference accessibility and all the barriers um, to deaf and hard of hearing people and the community when they go to conferences. And um, Catherine was explaining about this group. And so I was interested to come and check it out. I said, I don't mind if I do. So I thought I'd come and see um, how it how I could support you and um, be a resource for the deaf and hard of hearing community in tech and how we can maybe um, make the world of tech more accessible, particularly as it relates to conferences and networking accessibility, um, being able to build better relationships and so forth. All right, nice to meet you, Rebecca. Welcome, Rebecca. <laughs> Welcome, so happy to have you. Um, hi, my name is Mike um, Tota, and um, I work in tech. Um, I'm based at Gallaudet University, and um, I graduated from Information Technology Department in 2020, and now I'm starting grad school in um, cybersecurity, and I'm at GWU, and um, I do code on the side sort of thing for just, uh, you know, enjoyment. And I'm in Java and um, I, I, let me back up. I, I knew about this group because I met um, Catherine as well. And um, that was at a barbecue uh, just last month in Washington, DC. I'm from DC. And Catherine and I met there and we were talking about um, technology and computers and this group. And I really love open source and um, I use um, Linux at home and um, called the cloud. And when I heard about um, Docker, I got into that and Kubernetes and all of that on my own um, kind of um, it's in my it's it's on my bucket list to kind of learn some more about that and CNCF specializing in open source and cloud. I um, thought I, you know, with my Kubernetes background, I thought I could get involved and maybe support open source more and learn more about Docker, Kubernetes, and so forth. And in the future, um, if maybe I go to a different company or I work in a different area of cybersecurity, um, it's possible that um, cloud stuff, platform, open source, Kubernetes, et cetera, Docker will show up in my future. So, um, here I am. Nice to meet all of you. Nice to meet you too. Welcome. Nice to meet you. All right. Other new folks. I think we've got mostly people we've seen before other than those two new ones. I'm looking at the agenda. All right. Okay. 
Nice to meet all of the new faces. Again, thank you for introducing yourself and coming today. Catherine is going to talk about QCon. And so that's next, Catherine. Yeah, so we got a total of six talks at KubeCon and co and co-located events. So that's really, really exciting. Um, Sandeep will be talking, Destiny, Jay, Rob, Anastasia, Andrew. Uh, uh, yeah, I think those are the people. Uh, so we're going to have, if we all get uh, travel funding and uh, everything sorted and the visa sorted out, we have a bunch of deaf speakers at KubeCon, which will be amazing and, again, help uh, with... Uh, visibility. Um, travel funding deadline ended yesterday. So if you haven't done that, sorry, too late, but there is still the sponsorship, which will be, the deadline is September 1, I believe. And for the travel funding, uh, I think uh, September 16, it's, it's when the notifications are due. They have been late in the past, but like just for you to know. Uh, so fingers crossed. Um, yeah, because we want to have September six. September six is when the, September six is when the travel funding notifications oh. will be out. Okay, better, better. That's ten days earlier. <laughs> uh, okay. Any comments regarding that? Besides, we're all very excited uh, that we have so much staff representation. I mean, that's really cool. Uh, I yeah, think exactly. everyone who has got a speaking slot, please make sure that you have registered for the KubeCon. The last date to register is August 30. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's true. And I do see that Hazel just joined us. Uh, so let's do that little intro because I'm very excited because Hazel was finally here because she's been, I think I saw her uh, joining the Slack channel very early on, and then she was like gone forever until she popped up, up in my work life. So let's have her introduce herself. And yes, yeah. my uh, computer decided to completely break the microphone, and I had to restart the entire computer because Zoom wouldn't start and nothing else worked either. So that was fun. Um, hi, my name is Hazel. Uh, I'm hard of hearing. I was, when I was born, the doctors told my mom that I might never actually learn how to talk. And so sign language was my first language, and I have a very deep connection to the language, but I didn't have the community growing up. And so when I turned to and finally started to speak, I lost all of my signing. And so I've tried to regain it back a little bit but I haven't really been able to actually integrate the language into something that I know yet. Um, but I'm excited to be here because I think it's important to be able to have this modality and bring it into a more inclusive environment. And I'm really excited to see what that looks like. Yeah, welcome. <laughs> Thanks, Hazel. And one thing too is like, I think you are the third hard of hearing person. So like I, we all, we have a lot of deaf representation and we need more, more uh, hard of hearing. So uh, that's great too. And again, like if you want to uh, get back into sign language, I think this is the perfect uh, group because you have lots of people to, to uh, uh, practice it with. Uh, and I know you're very technical. So, uh, and you do know cloud native, uh, a lot of it. Um, so uh, I think you can bring a lot um, to this group as well, because um, Cloud Native is new for for many. So that makes me even more excited because we were looking for deaf and hard of hearing people who are actually really good at Cloud Native and can just like share their knowledge. And um, so um, there is a lot you can bring to this group. So I hope you stick around. <laughs> um. Okay, so let's uh, continue uh, then. Uh, people, some of you know that I've been working on uh, a um, larger initiative called Abide. If you are in the advocacy channel, you can read about it. Um, so um, we do have, and then basically the um, our group will become part of that. We have started a blind and visually impaired group and have three blind members. Uh, we're still working, uh, um, building the charter. 
And at some point we will do what we did with this group, um, um, share a post and then hopefully find, identify more blind people in our community. Um, so that's very early on. Um, we also have a, a BIPOC uh, group information. So um, uh, people, uh, what is it like? Um, uh, people, not black, indigenous and people of color. <laughs> group, uh, it will not uh, be part of Abide right yet because the Linux Foundation wants to focus on accessibility first, but we do want to have other minorities too kind of starting. Um, so that will be part of Abide eventually. Uh, that is even more early on. Um, and based on that, because I know a Destiny uh, joined as well, and I just put it out there for uh, our people uh, of color and our team as well to join, maybe be more active in our group, but it's good to just see what they're doing and so on. So I did start with one best practice that we I think we need to kind of work on, uh, which is best practices for a meeting without an interpreter, because it's just not feasible that interpreters will be everywhere in open source. There's just no money for it. And especially this is not even a, an official um, uh, group yet. So um, I have a draft, I will put in a channel uh, and it's just based on my gut feeling. I'm not deaf or hard of hearing. So I really need you to, to pull it apart and kind of say like, is this in the right, like just put your stuff in there. I just thought it's easier to, to um, work on something when you see it already written, but it doesn't have to be something as long as the best practices for the conference, right? This can be really short. And that's our best practices and our advocacy effort. Not everything is going to be giant. Like I think like the the, the best, the conference one is just because it is so complex, right? But um, um, so have a look at it and please provide feedback. And because uh, there will be a first meeting, I don't know if, if Destiny or Travis will want to join, but if they do, we want to make sure that they know uh, how to uh, make it more accessible. Um, okay, and so basically I'm working with uh, the Linux Foundation currently uh, on, on a charter for a byte. Uh, it will become basically, uh, that's the first step for it to become an independent Linux Foundation group. So it's not a CNCF group. As you know, the CNCF is part of the Linux Foundation. This is going to be a, a Linux Foundation wide group. So anything that is diversity and inclusion related within our ecosystem will be part of Abide, which is kind of exciting, right? So we will have for the first time a home for these things because we've seen like initiative here and there, you know, people have done stuff individually. We really want to find one home for everything that's diversity and inclusion and accessibility. And we're going to start with accessibility, which is really great, right? That's going to be the first thing. So um, it will not be an afterthought anymore because I know with DIA it's been very often. Um, yeah, I think that's all I had. If you have any questions or comments. If not, we can. So, oh. so considering uh, why are we working with Linux Foundation? Why not with the CNCF? Why not? Because the CNCF is smaller and we don't want to isolated within the, so if we want this to be um, applicable to all foundations. Okay. So the CNCF will only kind of make it for cloud native, but the CNCF has, I don't know how many foundations. Sharla, do you know how many foundations the CNCF, uh, the Linux, it's like, or no. maybe you, you? Yeah. There are Not even many people who work Go ahead. No, I interrupt you. Sorry. The Cloud Native Foundation is underneath the Linux umbrella, but the Linux umbrella is way up here. So there's all these trickle down factors. And then the Linux Foundation, one of their major revenue sources is events. So if we could tap into the all of those events and have that trickle down into all of those other things as well. And then, you know, I work in the wider open source community and the wider open source community emulates the Linux Foundation before they emulate the CNCF. So it makes more sense to have it under that wider umbrella because it has more reach. And I, I would also add, um, it might be an opportunity for people who are involved in CNCF or even in this, this um, group 
that I heard somebody introduce themselves. It might've been Michael who left, I think actually. But uh, for instance, he wants to get more into cybersecurity and there's the open source security foundation within Linux foundation. So it's probably some opportunities for collaboration and crossover uh, to make sure, you know, accessibility is included and people are included in their passion groups within Linux. Yeah, we want it to be bigger rather than smaller, right? Like, so that's basically the the idea to have bigger reach and like, yeah. And for those who've read the proposal, you know, it's fairly ambitious. So it will take probably a long time to be really, to get to that point where we want it to be. Uh, but uh, you, had, you have to start somewhere and uh, I'm excited uh, and, yeah, we'll see how it goes from here. With that, I think it's next is Sandeep, I think. It's your turn, Sandeep. Sorry, sorry, I misunderstood it that you are uh, you asking if I have any questions. Sorry. No worries. Ah uh, yes. Uh, so I think uh Milan has written an excellent blog. Okay, the link is there in the agenda and you can check it out. It gives it's a short read and it has some excellent pointers. So I encourage you to go and check out the link. And the second update that I have is uh, as a part of the communication group. Okay, so there is a SIG, there is a special interest group called Contrib XCOM, which is Contributor Experience Communication. So as a part of that, I'm working on bringing a spotlight about the death and the heart of hearing working group. So that spotlight is actually like a question answer a series of blogs and this and uh, the Kubernetes Twitter account will be within it. So it has like uh, millions of followers and then it will, they will also be put on the LinkedIn profile as well. Okay, so it is an attempt to give the group much more visibility and an effort towards an advocacy as well. So to begin with, uh, I have interviewed Catherine Ta. Okay, and in the next step, I think I'm going to interview some of you. Like that. Maybe, maybe Destiny and Rob about how you began to be cautious and how has your experience been. So once this blog is out, we will see how much traction it gets, uh, how much it drives inclusivity, and then maybe we'll go for the uh, multiple parts of the blog, like the part two, part three, and so on. So that's the update that I have. Got one comment. Um, so uh, yes, and I think it's so great that Sandeep just identified an opportunity and took it. There are so many opportunities for visibility within the CNCF blog posts, like just like I've mentioned several times, if you post something on social media, there is a social media channel where you can post it and then the CNCF a social media team will share it. Uh, again, they have a much bigger reach. So um, we need to leverage those tools. We have the full support. So let's make sure that we use them to get the word out, right? Like, and then if you, yeah, just like that, there is an opportunity to do these blog posts. And it's like, it's not this thing that will change everything, right? But like, it's just important for, for awareness, right? Like putting it out there here and here and, and reminding people, constantly you know that this group is here deaf people are part of the community these are the things how you you know this is how you can help with accessibility right like always and i always like to end with a call to action right because everyone has a role uh, they don't have to be part of this uh, group to help all they have to do is just understand and inform themselves and, and then uh, share those resources with other people uh, call out when things are not accessible and so on. So I think like that message, like constantly we need to kind of uh, make that point.
Ah, uh, so just adding a, adding a small note to what Catherine said, every one of you is actually a contributor, and every one of you can contribute in any way you want. If you want to write a blog as well, just let me know, and I'll connect you to the comms team. Or you want to do anything else, or you want some visibility, and you want the comms team to help you out with visibility. Okay, just please let me know. And if there's any other initiative that you want to do, uh, you can just share it in the group in the Slack, or you can reach out to Catherine, Destiny, or any of us. Okay, but just don't be afraid. Okay, if you think that your idea is not great, it's okay, don't worry about it. But if you want to share your idea with everyone, just take the first step. That's it. Oh, Milad. Uh, this is uh, Milad, speaker Sandeep. I see uh, that you come up with various ideas. I'm wondering, do you have any, let's see, like some sort of a resource that, or a blog that you check out yourself or for more resources that if something's not set up can be distributed to all of us and we can learn from what's out there? Okay, that's a good question. I mean, I don't really have like a particular blog that I follow, but uh, so this is a part of a comms team. So the special, just like we are a deaf and hard of hearing working group. So same way like in the Kubernetes ecosystem, there is a special interest group. So there is a special interest group about infra. There is a special interest group about each Kubernetes component. And the same way, there is a special interest group about communication. So the communication group creates a blog about each Kubernetes component. Okay, like the backend of Kubernetes, the frontend of Kubernetes, so each component, uh, they bring out for life. Okay, so it's just like there is no, uh, I mean, there is just no fixed thing. There is a format that we follow. Okay, but if you have any ideas or anything, uh, you feel free to contribute. So for example, I'll tell you the second idea, and that is like when a newcomer comes to the Kubernetes ecosystem, okay, they get overwhelmed. Like I want to start contributing to open source, how do I begin? Now the Kubernetes is too vast, so when do I get started? Okay, and I don't know the Go language, Kubernetes is written in Go language, I don't know. So how do I begin? When do I start? So there is one more document also that we are working so that the newcomer orientation is much more seamless. So like Milad, you and Andreas, you had a couple of ideas, okay? So you can even put that into action. And, and, uh, and okay, I think, so where can we uh, find that um, blog that you're referencing that, is it already been posted or is it out there or where can we find it? Is, uh, that blog is, is still it, work in progress. Okay, so right now I, I, I and Catherine are still reviewing it and then the team will be reviewing it. I think I could give all of you access if you want. Oh, I think once the comms team approves it, all of you will be able to read it. Okay, got it. I think one one thing, I Thanks think so once, much, oops, sorry, Destiny. Uh, so Sandeep, I think like once we are ready and we feel it, it is ready, uh, I think we can put it in the chat and then share for comments. Um, but I wouldn't do it while it's, work in progress. So I think like as, you know, and then people can just uh, provide feedback and so on. Um, so yeah, I think that sure. would be- Sure, um, if everyone, if, yeah, if you send it out, we can do that. We can provide that feedback to Sandy's thing. Thanks, Sandeep, I really appreciate that. Um, okay, that's a great opportunity, perfect opportunity for get us out, to get us out in the world and um, to talk about our stories or whatever we want to talk about. So that's really an awesome opportunity for us. Great exposure. So this is, this is just the beginning. Any questions? Yeah, this is just the beginning. And I want, basically, I want all of you one by one to feature in the blog series. I 
That's a great idea. That is a great idea. It's a great idea. Thanks, Cindy. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. Um, any other questions about anything we just covered so far? Any concerns? Any um, thing you're wondering about at this point? Okay, well, we'll just move on and um, Travis can take it and talk. Oh. I have a question. Oh yeah, Hazel, go ahead. Sorry, um, hang on. Yeah. So um, my question is, do we have a way to provide feedback on the best practices for meeting without interpreters document? Because I can't comment on it or edit it. So how do we, is that something that is being worked on actively? Or is that considered done? My mistake. Let me fix that. I absolutely want everyone to provide feedback. So my mistake. I think, uh, Hazel, uh, I think when we create anything, we always begin with the least privilege, the principle of least privilege. So unless really necessary, we restrict the permissions. I think not sure if everyone followed what I was trying to say. Okay, everyone good on that? Any more questions, comments, concerns? Okay, then we're going to go ahead and take take it over, Travis. And then we'll talk about the sign language glossary. Okay, everyone can see me okay? For some reason, uh, the camera's looking a little funny, so if, I'm not sure if I can see you. You can see me clearly. Okay, good. All right, so let's see. Oh, give me one second. Let me pull up my notes real quick. Hang on. All right. Well, thank you all for uh, who voted for which day of the week we might be able to uh, meet Thursday one for the glossary meetup. Finally, we'll be able to set up a glossary. We'll set it up monthly. Oh, sorry. I need to back up for a second. Some of you are, might be new here and you might know that we're sending a sign, sign language glossary. CNCF. Yeah, here, here for CNCF. And uh, I lost my train of thought, sorry. Like localization, short named L -A -L -N -N for localization. Either way, so that's our effort to try to come up with signs and add it to the English glossary that's already established. For now, there are no, for some, uh, there's nothing published or recorded yet, and we're working on that effort right now. Just for some of you that are new to uh, this meeting, just want to make sure you know that effort's going ongoing. Well, Thursday was the winning day to meet from 4 to 5 uh, p.m. UTC time. So UTC, don't worry about time zones where you might live in. So just follow UTC. So, if, you know, daylight saving times ends or begins, it's observed or not. UTC does not shift in any sort of way. So we'll always post a time at UTC time and send out reminders. For right now, it's set from 4 to 5 next month. It should be set for Thursday, September 9th, 4 to 5 UTC time, which is 12 to 1 for Eastern Standard Time here in America. Uh, let's see, 9 to 10 in Pacific Standard Time. And let me see my notes for something else. The goal of that glossary meeting will be to just have a discussion about signs for different terminology. The purpose is, you know, sometimes we don't realize ourselves 
that it's difficult to discuss uh, some terms in context uh, and some terminologies. We do need to come up with signs for some of the terminologies to be able to discuss in meetings. Uh, that, like how we might run, be able to run that meeting and other things that are related to the glossary determination. That meeting time is set to clarify the signs that are chosen. Like three to five different terms will be discussed. I'll be creating an agenda to share out with everyone. So you put it on your calendar, you're all invited. Uh, please uh, look at your calendars. So you might have, uh, if you're thinking about joining, please let me know so I can include you. Let me see what else I had in my notes. As I mentioned, we'll be discussing signs for different glossary terms. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean that you have to come up with a sign. We're all going to be helping each other out, uh, giving feedback about signs, coming up with ideas, and voting or choosing about a certain sign. We might record ourselves as uh, a note for yourself when you first think about a sign or a terminology, and then later we can make a formal video in that glossary meeting and to figure out what might be best suited for our working purposes here. And let me see. Oh, also there is a little note here that I wanted to let you know that meeting with at least three people have to RSVP confirmed attendees. If, it, if it's uh, we don't have a minimum of three, then we'll have to cancel and put off the next one. Uh, so just want to put that on your radar. So, you know, if you're invited, look at your calendar. Uh, and if you have any questions or concerns or feedback or comments, please let me know. Feel free to talk about it anytime. Okay, hey, any questions about the glossary or what Travis just covered? Everybody follow? Okay, um, I forgot to add on the agenda that we still knew, do need to have um, um, a guide and um, that will be under our how to contribute to the glossary. So um, if you get a chance, go look at that, go look at the guide and um, you know make changes, add feedback, whatever, and we'll publish that, but it hasn't been published yet. So we'll start our meeting September 19th and then we'll be ready to go ahead and um, move to uh, creating that glossary, okay? Any questions, comments, concerns, et cetera? We have plenty of time. We have a lot of time. <laughs> September is Deaf Awareness Month, which Milan yeah. uh, just commented. Yeah. Okay, so I missed on the chat with something happened on the chat. Oh, okay, okay. All right, um, Milad, did you want to take the next bit? Okay, so just talked with a few people and we had an experience that I wanna share with you all about what's been happening thus far. It's a really interesting experience. I'll try to make it short. In the past at Paris, we applied, I applied at a company to see if they had any kind of support that can be provided, like funding, anything whatsoever. We didn't get any response in that request. And so we put it off and everything uh, that we decided to take on everything ourselves as a team. But that was an important beginning point be to become more visible and get more recognition out in the community. And so now in America, we don't have a lot of funding or support, but we are starting to see uh, small bits of funding coming in. And in the total, con we're trying to figure out how to get more visibility, more contributions and more work as a whole. And I feel like that issue, uh, is that how you sign vitamin? Right? Okay, yeah, I just wanna make sure I have the right sign.
it's like an advocacy vitamin that we have to take to keep the momentum going. Because if you st stop taking the vitamins, you stop working hard, right? And so I wanted to put out there to you all to see if any of you feel like your work's not working out. I just want to encourage you all to keep going, keep contributing. At some point, you, someone somewhere will respond and will help you out. And so I just want to thank you all as a team for giving me that kind of uh, boost. This is an awesome group of people. I really want to applaud you all. And I love this group. Just, just thank you very, very much of, of having that experience thus far. All right, thank you for that. Rob Koch, our co-chair has just arrived. Um, so um, we've introduced the new people here. So meet Rob Koch, everybody. Oh, and Catherine, you raised your hand. Yeah, um, I just, I know I mentioned that before, but like to Milat's um, a point, the more you get out there and your peop your company sees you on the stage, ideally with a t-shirt with your company name, you mentioning how accessible, how great of an employer they are because they're accessible, you make them look great and they will want to support you. And I think that is something that Milat's company started to realize, right? Because first it was like, yeah, hey, he's going to go to a conference. So I don't know, whatever. And then he's like, oh, we did the video. He did a talk. And it was like, wow, like this is really good for us. So slowly they will realize, hey, you are an asset, right? And the good thing about you is that you're an asset. You may even have an advantage in that sense because there are a lot of hearing people, you know, doing talks. And I hope it changes. And it's just, at some point, it just doesn't matter whether you're deaf or hearing, but right now you are special once you're on stage. So use that because people are going to say like, it's going to, you know, make a difference. Like people are going to remember. Uh, and so um, let them know whenever you have a talk, share the video, don't be shy, promote yourself. Uh, that is something that Americans are much better at than people abroad. So especially the people uh, in, in Europe and so on tend to be a lot more humble. So learn, like just learn to be, you know, just brag about it, like in a, in a nice way, but let them know because that makes will make a difference, right? Yeah, um, it, I used to be much more meek, Milad is saying. <laughs> and Destiny says, yeah, I mean, that that whole story, um, that, it, that point you just emphasized, Catherine, is really true because last year when I came into the CNCF working group, I was pretty, you know, quiet and I didn't contribute as much as I do now. Um, but when I, I was working for a nonprofit at the time and it wasn't a technical role for me, I was just supporting community work. So um, when I joined CNCF, I mean, I didn't know about the technology. I didn't know about anything, but I'll tell you what I have learned is contributing. Um, I, I do a whole lot more of that now. And people are like, oh, you're on stage at KubeCon. That's big. You know, I mean, that, and we've gotten such great feedback from all of our involvement. So, um, and then, you know, getting sponsorship to travel to certain conferences. So, I mean, I didn't even think to ask in the beginning. And I'm just like, okay, well, I'll figure it out. I'll work it through work. But, you know, now after all of this, after the exposure I've had and the big impact of people coming up to me and encouraging me and saying they want to learn more, um, I just feel like there's um, so much more this year that we can look to to get, you know, paid for a trip to KubeCon or whatever to help with anything I need, uh, hotels, travel. I mean, I've just been shocked at the resources that have been available. My first experience, you know, I mean, I did get experience from uh, a scholarship rather from CNCF um, and it was so much fun and it was a great time. Um, and, you know, interpreting after hours, you know, for going out, you know, it was really fun. We had interpreters for that this year. I don't know, but last year we did have that um, in Chicago. So, um, like Catherine was saying, um, it's all part of advocacy. It's all part of helping. It's all part of getting out there and supporting each other and getting the word out and scholarships, helping with us getting there and, you know, planning travel, et cetera. I mean, everything was so, you know, unknown to me at the start. And now, you know, now I've got it down. So, and uh, we've supported each other. I've learned a lot. And that's really the point of advocacy, isn't it? I mean, because we don't have to be shy. We don't have to be afraid. We ask. 
and we help each other. And that has been just a tremendous experience for me. And um, I love you all for all your help. And uh, I'm going to cry. So <laughs> we, love this. we love you back. <laughs> big heart, big flashing heart. <laughs> that, um, that reminds me that uh, I put in the Slack channel a while ago, but I met a woman at a networking event. Her name is Jane and she's a professional coach and she volunteered. If anyone's interested in this group, I told her that I work with this group. So she said um, she has not, I believe, worked with someone who is deaf or hard of hearing before, but she's open to, uh, you know, messaging and figuring out what works for whoever. And I think even outside of this group, if you know someone on the point of, you know, just coaching up, a, I love to be more American about your uh, outgoingness or comfort in speaking or anything or or going for a speakership or trying to get a promotion, things like that. She might be a good resource. So happy to connect whoever might be interested. Okay. Um, that'd be awesome. Yes. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. Um, Zim Shen saying, I would like to share, you know, I'm, from my past experiences of presenting um, in Laos and um, um, Kampuchea. Thank you. <laughs> um, and and um, Myanmar. And yeah, so I um, went to a deaf and hard of hearing group there and used universal sign language, the international sign language. And so we more gestured than anything. But um, there were a lot of English words that, you know, um, I, I didn't really understand. And um, I, we didn't all understand each other perfectly, but we learned from each other. And we helped each other with the tech stuff that we could do. And there were a lot of progress was made when we went to those things with the deaf community and in Laos. And like I said, um, Kampuchea and... Um, in particular, and then um, sometimes there there weren't a lot of people at some of these conferences to see, but the ones I've mentioned, there were, and um, um, Pucha did not provide the services. Oh, Amazon, of course. <laughs> and um, an Amazon uh, event um, that uh, that d was more accessible. So um, the Amazon partnership. Um, Let's see, there was um, uh, Los Alamos and then- um, in, in Laos, they did provide interpreters, but in Kampucha, they did not. And Myanmar uh, had as well interpreting there, but we had a little bit of an issue. And so we, so we chose Laos for the presentation in, international sign language. It was a slightly tech centric, but we were able to understand more or less and we got through it okay. The deaf community is very small. Uh, I would say about 64, 46 interpreters, not sure, but uh, it was an effort made. Yeah, we just continue to advocate and um, get the word out, People let people know what we're doing, show what we're doing and um, continue to just keep going, keep getting the word out. And Zeno saying, uh, they were saying that we had to pay for interpreting services ourselves. And I think it would cost us about a thousand euros uh, for, and the, we thought about kind of interpreters for international sign language. And we were able to, we tried to use a translation tool to be able to read some of the English. And they were about, there was about 30 minutes to 45 minutes of a talk. And then they switched to someone else who was hearing. Uh, interpreters unclear about the nature of the duration of that talk. Um, so before we close, I wanted to add, um, Rob was talking about, um, different training opportunities and promotions and um, different opportunities you might have for um, 
talking to your manager. Rob, did you did you want to carry on about that? Yeah, Rob saying, yeah, I can talk about that a little bit. It was started in 2018. Um, back in 2018, 2017, there was an opportunity um, for professional coaching and um, great opportunity. And um, we really focused on um, helping individuals progress next steps in their career, setting goals, writing what they wanted um, in the future, et cetera, and step-by-step -step moving people into uh, career planning. So um, we could help them with promotions, et cetera. Et cetera. So um, I'm an AWS data hero. And um, those that has helped me a lot too in terms of um, goals and um, uh, contributing to the community and able it has made me able to take advantage of a lot of encouragement and information and uh, career advice simply by being involved in that program and um, so I would strongly recommend that if you um, feel stuck or like you've hit the ceiling in your career advancement please take advantage of that resource that we're talking about here um, it's it's um on the chat Travis is saying I'm still thinking about um, like being involved in that, like from an OG level, but um, like um, to where we can go to get challenged and um, steps we can take to move on and in our careers. And yeah, it, it, it is it, a lot of management qualities that you may not have that you can develop. Um, and um, I'm not wanting, you know, some people aren't wanting to um, you know, if you want to become a contributor or a manager in CNCF or whatever, it's a challenge that you um, can take on and you can take it on as an individual. So it's a great idea to get that support and get that push to get you to contributor or manager. Milad saying, also, I feel like, um, you know, if you, if you've got it, if you've got the, <laughs> everything is oiled for you, you know, it, it, it you may fall a little bit, but it'll help grease the way for you to move forward if you have some extra, extra career advice, you know, extra, and it'll help you uh, in supporting you as you move forward in your career. I, I have felt definitely the same too with this. Um, Destiny said you have to crawl before you walk, right? <laughs> and Rob says, yeah, okay. So Catherine, did you, did you have something? Yeah, I had actually added something uh, at the uh, end of the um, agenda in the last minute. Um, so uh, just to talk about advocacy again, first of all, I'm so excited that Rebecca joined because she is really passionate about uh, advocacy and she's done it in the past. And I know that a lot of people here are new to it. So I'm really hoping that her uh, skills and her knowledge in that area will be, well, I, I know it will be a huge as, uh, asset. So I, I, I get, I also hope she sticks around because uh, we really need that. Um, so basically, um, so where we're at, um, so as you all know, we have a place on the website uh, where we're publishing our best practices, right? And we have uh, the conference best practices and we did start promoting it because it cannot stop with publishing it on the web. So no one knows the website yet, right? So just putting it out there is not going to help a lot. And so we started, uh, people started um, doing social media posts. Bryce did a really good one. Destiny did another uh, great one. And the CNCF um, shares those as well. So again, like whenever like, we can leverage their uh, reach, um, Let's continue our work there. Uh, I think uh, we can do social media and we can also do uh, emails. Oh, and I think uh, Destiny, you even emailed a company uh, and they uh, replied. So yeah, that's true. They already have um, best practices of their own. But when I shared ours, um, adding in more interpreters for different talks, um, was one thing they had done, but um, we hadn't really gotten to the networking part of the smaller workshops. Um, so it was on GitHub. So it was really terrific um, uh, to be able to con contribute to that as well. So that was great. And also, um, I want to say as well on that topic that um, the LinkedIn blog posts that we were talking about, um, I I've, I've perused a couple, but I mean, you don't really get a lot of impressions on those blog posts 
So, um, because there's not anything on there for months and months at a time. So if we are posting more regularly, we'll get more impressions. We, if you post, you get a thousand or so, but I, I saw like 30 likes, but impressions was over a thousand. So that was rather shocking to me how that um, was differentiated. So I just want to tell you, it can have a much bigger impact, even if they're not liking it or sharing it. The impressions is that they saw it. So, um, you have to pay attention to that too and not just likes and shares. So we need to keep going and um, we're not done. And a thousand is a big impact to me in my mind. So I feel like we need to keep going, keep promoting, keep putting it out there, keep posting, keep adding. And um, even if you think nobody's seeing it, keep sharing and keep networking it. And we have each other and um, we can keep doing it, okay? Yeah, and I think something that most people, oh, okay. Uh... Yeah, question. One second, please. Oh, oh for getting awards. Question. Destiny's saying, oh, for getting awards from the CMCF um, for all of us. Yeah, that would be that would be amazing if we if we did have awards. But it it would be. But um, if if they did that, that would be amazing. Anyway, but our working group did get an award. Yeah, we did. So. Um, one thing that is kind of interesting when you talk to sales or sales team, right? Uh, because selling is all about pushing out messages and getting an answer, right? We're not selling uh, our best practices, but it's very similar, right? Like we have to push. They send sometimes 10 emails with no reply. And on the 10th, the person actually replies. So it's really surprising when you hear how the process is so one email is not enough it's like hey reminder can i like so it's like like we think like people who are not in sales just believe it's like yeah just send an email and that's done people i mean like if you look at your email box you get so much stuff you ignore it you you don't even read it or but it's like once again and again and at some point it sticks so um the same applies to to social media posts email to everything so it, it's not a one and done thing if we want the uh, events to really change. And we do have a list with more organizers that I don't think we actually uh, targeted. And I think Hazel has a um, question or comment. Yeah, it was just a, a comment on top of that, which specifically in sales, the actual number is about 21. So it requires 21 impressions of someone seeing the thing, recognizing it, and actually processing that information before they actually see it for the first time. So when you show something to someone, you have to show it to them 21 times, and then they will, for the first time, see the information. And particularly when you're in engineering leadership and you're trying to broadcast information, even in your own company and organization, the rule of thumb is if you are sick of repeating yourself, you're almost at the minimum level of communication required. That's a very good point. Yeah. Yeah, but how do you get it out 21 times in your organization? <laughs> Catherine, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Yeah. Oh, Milad saying, yeah, um, if you understand, um, like we're talking about the email sharing idea. So in my company where I work, I share personal or work experiences or spotlight things. I kind of have a little thing that I do here. And um, it's, it's something that I have experienced. Um, Destiny saying, yeah, it's I'm putting up stuff on GitHub or whatever, too. Um, they have um, like a big thing soon happening for GitHub. I can't remember when, but um, I saw last year, watched some of their events and there was one interpreter for the whole big open stage, but that was it. One interpreter for the open, like opening ceremonies kind of thing. So um, like we were talking about Catherine about emailing and um, seeing what people say, but in my, in my personal email, I have seen that to be true. Yeah. And we love saying that's good share. And I mean, we see it all like we get like we live in a in a environment where we are bombarded with information all the time. So it's like just like 
put yourselves in the shoes. Like you get a thousand emails, oh, you cannot process that all. So it, it's just that, like they're facing exactly the same thing. And conference organizers are buy stuff. So they're bombarded with vendors, you know, pitching them things all the time to fight this, fight this, fight this. So like certain professions have are more prone to get emails. So their inbox is probably flooded with stuff pitching and then our email is one of them so um so yeah so definitely we cannot stop doing that and then uh so we do have a channel for advocacy um so i hope everyone who's interested in that effort can join um and um i think we only have one minute so i'm sure Indeed, Lane has to leave for the next meeting. So actually, I, I'm good. If you need to go a couple minutes past, I'm fine today. <laughs> oh, we're back. Uh, Jay. Uh oh, where'd Jay go? Okay. Oh. Um. Yeah. We. I would like to talk about that. Definitely. Yeah. And if um you all have the opportunity, Rebecca is saying in the next month. There, um, September, it's Deaf Awareness Month, as you know. So that's a good time. It's a really simple thing that you can do is to post about Deaf Awareness and you can do that on LinkedIn. And um, you can just say, hey, I'm deaf. I'm an engineer. I am I work with Docker, whatever. It's simple, you know, and here's, here's a hashtag more visibility or whatever, whatever you feel comfortable doing or elaborating on your own story. And it can be a very simple thing and you, we can get attention by using Deaf Awareness Month. Sounds great. Milad saying, Catherine. Um, so when you, um, are you making a template and posting um, where we can, um, that we can use it for posting for this month for Deaf Awareness Month? Is that something we're gonna do? Maybe that's an idea. Uh, Destiny says, I think we already have something in that vein. Um, if, are you talking about, Catherine's email? I don't know. I mean, just something for marketing that we could, you know, just copy and paste and share and just, or include a little blurb about our own experience to personalize it, but like a template for Deaf Awareness Month to put the word out. I mean, Catherine or any of us, really, I was just asking if Catherine had anything on hand. Let's uh, just continue that. Oops. We need to wrap up, Destiny's saying. Yeah. We do need to yeah. wrap up. Let's continue that conversation in the advocacy channel because this is an advocacy thing. Um, so uh, I think, as always, posts should be, you know, personal about your experience, as Rebecca was saying, is really important. And then we can help. Uh, we definitely can help, um, you know, worth smithing it. So it, it it's very... Uh, uh, it, it sounds good and so on, but yeah, let's collaborate on that. And we should maybe do once a week or twice. I don't know. We should really bombard <laughs> the um, um, social media with that during that month. So great uh, idea. So I don't know who who remembered that it was. Was it you, Rebecca? I don't know. So I, anyway, it's a great idea to to really uh, use that uh, as an occasion to um, promote our efforts. Yeah. We can go on and on about that for sure during Deaf Awareness Month. Yeah, okay. Love all of you. Take care. And we'll wrap up now. Big hearts. Um, great to see the new faces here today. And um, hope to see you all next month. Big hearts and love. <laughs>